Hello everyone, in today's Extend Script tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the render queue in After Effects. Now basically today we're going to be creating a script that takes a composition, puts it in the render queue, changes the preset, output location, and renders it automatically for us. We're also going to be learning about how to do a few other things like remove things from the render queue, uh, which send it to Adobe Media Encoder, and some others. So if I go ahead and run the script we're going to be creating today, it's going to add it to the render queue and then immediately start rendering it in, as you can see, MOV format. So let's go ahead and get started in creating this script today. So to get started, I'm just going to comment out some of this code by selecting it and holding down Control shift k or Command-Shift-K on Mac. And this is just going to allow me to go line by line and explain things. So today's goal is to take this composition here, add it to the render queue, and then figure out what other things we can do inside of the render queue to make rendering a much quicker process. So obviously we need to start off with a composition, which we have here as our active item. So we'll start off by selecting it, and then we need to add the composition to the render queue. Inside of the After Effects scripting guide, we can navigate to the render queue object, and this is going to give us all of our options. So what we want to do is basically add a new render queue object or a new render queue item to our render queue. To do that, we're going to create an item variable here and we're just going to grab app.project and the render queue itself because it's its own entity. We're going to be referencing all of the items in the render queue, which right now there are zero. And we're going to add the composition, which is the same exact thing as going to composition add to render queue. So once we've added it to the render queue, we now have a single item inside of it. The main settings we need to mess with inside of this whole object here is the output module and the output to location, which are going to be basically our preset and format, as well as our output location on our computer. So our item variable here is referring to the entire object that was added here, and that includes the output module and the output location. Then I'm going to create a variable called the output module itself, which is going to reference just the presets in here. By default, it's set to lossless, but as you can see, I have an MOV, a PNG, and some other nice formats. So today I'm going to be using the MOV preset, and we can basically call it by name as you will see. So to reference this output module, we just need to grab the first output module here. It is possible to create multiple. As you can see, I can just duplicate and this will allow me to basically have multiple renders going on at once. If I wanted to do a PNG pass and a JPEG pass, I could go through and add a bunch of output modules. But in my case, I just need one. So we're going to just reference the first output module right here. And then I'm gonna create a variable just to make simplifying where I'm gonna save it to be easier. In this case, I'm gonna select my desktop, but you can use a UI or put in your own variable to save it to wherever. Now the next thing I want to do is show you all of the templates. What I mean by this is all of the output module templates. If I hit this arrow key here in the output module section, it's going to show me all of the templates on my computer. So if I go ahead and say alert all of our templates here, you can see it's going to give us a, a list of all of the templates available on the system. So you can see I have my JPEG, my MOV, and my PNG presets. And what this will allow you to do is actually go through, check what the user has installed on their computer. And if they don't have an MOV preset or a JPEG preset, you could say, tell them, hey, you need to create a preset with this name. And that way we can render properly. All right, so now that we have access to all of those templates, now what we can do is actually apply one of them to our output module here. So we have it currently default set to the lossless AVI file, which obviously nobody really uses. So since I have an MOV preset here, I can simply grab my output module, which again references this first output module right here. And we're going to apply the template called MOV, which is simply this one. So now when I go ahead and run this, you can see it goes through and adds it to the render queue and then adds the preset called MOV. So I could also do this for JPEG, simply change the name, and now we run it, and now it's set to JPEG. Now what if we type in something that's not valid? Well then obviously we're going to get an error. So that's why if they don't have it installed, you'll need to go through their templates again and check. 
So we're going to apply the MOV template so we can export as a QuickTime. And now the last thing we need to do is select where are we going to save it and what are we going to call it. We can choose any of these from within here. And as a foreshadowing before we add these to media encoder, uh, what you name them and the file location in here will also translate over to media encoder itself. So this part is actually important. So to change where we're going to change the location of where it's going to save and the name, we just need to grab our output module, our first one here again, which is now set to the MOV template. And we're going to set the file property equal to a file object. Now one cool thing is we don't have to include the actual extension, so we don't have to tell the file that this is an MOV. It's going to automatically recognize it based on the uh, output module itself. So in my case, I'm just gonna set it to a file in our output folder, which is in this case our desktop, and we're gonna call it text plus our comp name, which in this case would be like test uh, zone test. Let's just make it a little simpler. Let's just call it, um, Test render, all caps. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Select my comp and run. And now you can see it is now called test render.mov, just as we specified here. So now the last thing is to get the actual render itself complete. To do this, we just need to call the entire render queue object, app.project.render queue, and call the render function. This will automatically render anything set to queued inside of the render queue. So if we go ahead and run it now, it's going to go through, add it, call it test render, and begin the rendering process. Now lastly, we can do one last thing, and that's if we don't want to use the render queue. Say we need to send it to uh, Adobe Media Encoder to get it exported as a, a H.264 or MP4 format. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out our render queue render here. We still want to add uh, our file into the render queue though. That way we can tell Media Encoder the location and name of the file. So to send it to Media Encoder, we just need to grab the render queue object and call queue and AME with the argument true. True means that it will render immediately once Adobe Media Encoder loads. If you set it to false, it's just going to add it to Adobe Media Encoder and just wait until you press the start button. So when we do this, what should happen is it'll actually load Adobe Media Encoder and render it in the default format you've already selected for Media Encoder. So say last time I had Media Encoder open, I used uh, MP4 format. In this case, it would be in that same format. So now if we run it, you can see it's going to load it up inside of Media Encoder and immediately begin the rendering process. And as you can see, the last format I selected was H.264, so that is going to be what it saves as. All right, that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That is how to use the render queue inside of ExtendScript for After Effects. If you enjoyed, as always, be sure to leave the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave a comment down below. And as always, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.